Next up at UFC Kansas City, we have Lando Venata, which is such an awesome name. That's a cool name. It Lando. Cool name. He looks Lando. like a Lando too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if there's ever a Lando, he looks like looks like a Lando. It's, it's a little a cool bit American name. History X in the, in his eyes. All though, right. Which well, is a little yeah, concerning. No, there's some hate. A little there's, concerning. There's a little bit of hate. He's a we good got, guy, though. He's a good We guy. got Lando Venata taking on Daniel Zellhuber. Imagine it was Lando Zellhuber. That's an absurd name. Anyway, taking on Daniel Zellhuber. Lando Venata, 12-6 and six overall. 3-2 and two in his last five. He is alternating wins and losses. He's taking on Daniel Zellhuber, 12-1 and one overall. 4-1 and one in his last five. He is coming off a loss in his UFC debut, which was his first ever career loss. Lando Venata is a flashy striker. He's got crazy kicks, spinning attacks, comes out fast, and he is absolutely not a slow starter. This dude just... Like a lawnmower. You pull that cord and boom, Woo. he's off to the races. I, I just, that wasn't even in my notes. I just did. I mean, I mean, the, the improvisation is really, really it's, improving. It's, it must be all the kill Tony you've been watching, honestly. As, not, in those I, interviews, you got to be quick, fast, in a hurry. You think you could, you could think you could grab a lawnmower right now, first, first pull, rip that thing? I, I've mowed hundreds of, I would, I, assuming that it primed, uh, primed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yes. Just yes. first pull. Boom. 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 You know how many lawnmowers I've had to start and use and weed whackers and all that bullshit? Mm. From Connecticut. I'm not from... I talk like I'm from the city. I am. Not. I had to start it for the for the maid so she could go, <laughs> so she could go mow the lawn. She couldn't start. I started up. Get out there. Anyway, Lando Venata's takedown defense is solid at 68%. And we have seen him work in his own offensive takedowns if the striking is not going his way. Daniel Zellhuber is impressive. He's a he's a really cool striker to watch. Very aggressive, dynamic attack style. Really long limbs, which gives him power on his feet, but he also uses it in his grappling. If you take him down, he's doing all those long guy lurch type reach underneath. Yeah, just all that nonsense. Just which the shit out of you. Which at least wraps his opponents up, oh, slows them down, and can create scrambles. Congratulations. It's fucking built up now. Huh? I've been telling you to take a jiu-jitsu class. You just refuse. You want some transparency? Looks... You want some fucking transparency here? <laughs> That's sad, dude. Look at you. Wow. People are impressed. Look at this. Look at the side. Wait, here, let's go side chest. I wonder how many people just took the phone into the bathroom right now. That banana guy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Sarbog or whatever is, Tarbog, what is it? Okay, shut up. Anyway, Daniel Zell Huber's coming off that loss to Trey Ogden, where he was where he was gun shy, but it was clear when he actually let his hands go that Daniel was the better striker in that matchup. This fight is basically dead even now. It opened with Zell Huber as a good size favorite. The line collapsed on itself. It was floating at minus 110, minus 110. Now it's bouncing a little bit. Zell Huber remains the very slight favorite. But again, this line tightened significantly. I still think Zell Huber is the pick. He's going to be my pick. I think Lando is probably the more well-rounded fighter overall. But Zell Huber is just more talented. Has that relentless attack striking pace. And if he doesn't have the UFC jitters in this fight, let's say he shook him in the last fight, he should let his hands go. He should be technical and he should be able to get this done. So I like Daniel Zellhuber to get it done. These are definitely much better odds than when it opened. And I absolutely understand the line movement because people don't know if they can trust him. Whereas Lando Venata, yeah, he's got six losses, but the dude shows up, puts in that work and tries to get it done. This is probably another under two and a half round line, honestly. This card... I actually might do an experiment very quickly. I might bet under two and a half on every fight instead of the women's fights just to see what happens. Just to see. I'm not going to put it on premium or maybe I'll put a note on there that, you know, I don't want people to, oh, how, yo, I fucking lost everything because I, I can't read. So I might just. <laughs> I might do that as an experiment because it's not very often you get this many two and a half round lines. And frankly. It's a live crowd. And. Fr uh, yeah, it's a live crowd yeah. in a real in a real yeah. arena. And Get frankly, if there's up. if there's 14 fights on a card, 12 male fights, I mean, seven of them have to go under have to go finish, right? So, I'll mess with that. I'll give it a shot and see what happens. Jakey boy, what do you think? 
Yeah, this is going to be a very, very interesting fight because it all kind of determines and it depends on what Daniel shows up to this fight. If it's the Daniel that he can be, I think he can kind of dominate this fight. I think, he, as Angel mentioned, the, the long, rangy striker, very dynamic striker. When he does throw hands, he has very good success, and Lando is a guy that can get hit. The issue is, and what actually kind of works out better for Daniel is, his loss to Trey Ogden, he basically lost because he just didn't do enough. I mean, he's, he was just waiting and waiting for counter shots. Trey was not giving him enough to counter off of, so he just kind of sat there and as I mentioned earlier with the fighter with with Gaston there was really, really no sense of urgency to pick up the pace right now I got to start doing stuff so now it's like he was, still was just kind of waiting and he's a young kid 23 24 years old whatever he is UFC debut Trey did you know look decent against Bahama Mama so you know it kind of helps his cause a little bit like people are like oh this is a grappler Trey he lost to but Short he notice. held his own yeah he held his own against Bahama Mama so now it's like okay maybe Trey's a little bit better than we thought it's going to come down to what da what Daniel shows up because if he's just waiting, Lando Venata is the perfect opponent to just kind of dance around. He's very fluid. He's in and out. I think he's the more well-rounded fighter. I think Daniel's a better striker, but Lando could easily just kind of in and out, boom, 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 boom. And if Daniel's not doing enough, he can definitely lose this decision. So Daniel's got to come in. He's got to let his hands go. He's got to trust his hands. I know he's a young kid in front of the live crowd. Again, you know that might affect him even more. He might freeze up. Um, cause, you know, but pff, I hope not. But Daniel is going to be the pick because he is the better striker. But this is his last chance. I, I'm not going to put money on him because I can't trust him. I, if I'm trying to hope that somebody is going to come out aggressive, I can't put money on hopes and dreams, right? We, I need to see something, and that's what I'm putting money on. You know, it's, it might seem like I've been putting money on hopes and dreams, but <laughs> normally, normally the bets are based on stuff that I see in film. But I got to go with Daniel. I'm not going to put money on him until he can prove that he can let those hands go. If he does, I think he can have some real success. And if he doesn't, I, I think he can definitely lose his fight. That's why the, uh, the odds have kind of closed where they are. I, I agree. And you said hopes and dreams, but outside of his last fight in the UFC, that is how he fights. He comes out aggressive. So it's not yeah. absurd that he would come out and, aggressive. And, Trey, and what worries me a little bit is because Trey is an awkward guy to fight, to fight because he really doesn't do a lot. and He's kind of like a weird. And Lando is also a, another kind of awkward guy to fight because he's just very fluid. What's it? I think his nickname's Groovy. Um, just kind of the way he's very in and out and fluid. So we'll see. Yeah, and Daniel Zellhuber has 13 fights. In 12 of them, he came out fast and aggressive. So he may do that here. We're both on uh, Zellhuber here. Uh, sounds like you trust him a little less than I do. I think he's just we're, – we're both needing him to do what we know he's capable of doing yeah, and not just, just, to me. Not just, just freeze to me. up. I would love moment. to start putting money on it because I, I like him. It's just I, yeah, I, he's, he's just got to watch. prove it that he's he's got to do what he needs to do. Well, and frankly, like I said, in that in his last fight with Trey Ogden, he was gun shy. But when he actually let his hands go, yeah, he's, it was clear. It was very clear. Yeah. This guy's the much better striker. I mean, his nickname is the just, golden boy, for God's sake. He just – didn't do anything with it. So, anyway, um, I just got distracted because of this comment. Lando's stomach muscles look like armadillo shells. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck is your brain doing? They are like, he's flexing. I mean, that thing is flexed out. He's, <clears throat> it might be some air, it's weird to have. It's weird to have that defined abs with no chest. That's a little. That's why it looks a little bit. It's like his chest is melting into his abs. His belly sticks out farther than his chest. He's officially not jacked. Anyway. I mean, he, he definitely doesn't have this side profile. Okay, this again. $7,700 for Lando, $8,500 for Daniel Zellhuber. I do think if Zellhuber wins, it will be by finish. If Lando wins, I think he's just sort of point fighting or controlling a gun shy Zellhuber. So I think Zellhuber is probably the better play in DraftKings. Even if you think Venata wins, you're going to get him at a discount, but I don't think he'll win by finish and I don't think he'll score that well. 